Hello everyone, it's Milo here and I'm doing uh, some match commentary on my uh, round one match in the Mono Blue Cube. I'm playing against Mick, who designed the cube, and uh, I'm going first. I play an island and pass the turn. He plays an island, passes the turn over to me. Island Go, I think that's an archetype in this format. I play a Felwar Stone. What that does is allows me to tap to add a mana of uh, any land my opponent controls, so I can add blue mana. He played a better two mana artifact, he played Umaza Umazawa's Jite. It's an equipment that does everything. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that one. I end of turn impulse here. I'm going to look at the top four cards in my library, put one into my hand and the rest on the bottom. Impulse is a cube staple. He's playing pretty much every cube. I'm going to draw for turn, and then he's going to click me. And he's going to get a, a, a look at my super embarrassing hand here. I have two islands, Mind Over Matter, Black Lotus, and Black Vice. So a six mana enchantment, a zero mana artifact, and a one mana artifact. He goes, he said something along the lines of, okay, so a super aggressive card in Black Lotus, a super controlly card in the Mind Over Matter, and just like a random Black Lotus. So he's going to make me discard the Mind Over Matter. Or I guess make me put it on the bottom of my library. And then I'm going to get to draw a card. And, uh, you don't know what that card is yet. Maybe you'll find out shortly. I play the Black Vice because, you know, why not? It was uh, obviously the card I drew into on that draw step. Or else I would have played it earlier. I didn't play the Lotus because I had nothing to Lotus into. And why tick, tip him off? make him think that I'm going to do something. I make him take that one damage off of the uh, Black Vice. He equips the Jitte to the Clique and attacks. I Vapor Snag the Clique. Normally, a terrible play. You don't want to <laughs> bounce your opponent's Clique. He plays a Phantasmal Bear. And I say, you know what? Whatever, man. So I draw. Mick is uh, sporting that Grand Prix uh, Toronto playmat that was the modern GP in Toronto in 2011. I, of course, am showing off my Magic the Gathering Game Day Champion playmat for 2015 core sets. I play a Black Lotus and I sack it. Uh, it's the proxy Lotus, so it actually it says tap and sack to add three blue to your mana pool. I add three more and then another two. For a total of eight mana and I upheaval. He says, that's a good one. Upheaval goes to the graveyard, but all the other permanents in play go to our hands. I had two blue mana floating and I played my land for turn into a black vice, two floating uh, into the Felwar stone. He takes 7 damage during his upkeep from the Black Vice. He plays Phantasmal Bear and then discards down to 7 cards. He's discarding a lot of lands. And a Serendipity, possibly? It's hard to tell exactly what he's keeping. If he's keeping that Factor Fiction, he's keeping that Serendib. He decided to get rid of the facts. This is interesting. I didn't get to see this when I played him the first time. I didn't know. Okay, he got rid of the serendip, the fact and fiction, and I can't tell what else. 
my turn, I play my land for turn. Then I pay... I'm thinking this is kind of a stupid play, because then he can play around it. But I'd rather get this out there now and make use of that Felwar Stone. It doesn't really cost me anything. He took his three damage off the Black Vice. He played an island. I would put money on it that he's going to be attacking me for two damage this turn. And I see a Vaporkin eagerly awaiting battlefields in his hand. It comes into play. Winter Orb uh, says each player can only untap up to one land during their untap phase. It's really annoying. Uh, Vaporkin is a 2-1 flyer that can only block flyers. I untap my one island for turn, play another island, pass the turn. Mick untaps one island, takes some more damage off that Black Vice, attacks me for four, and then taps both of his islands for a Jitte, which he can only attach to the Vaporkin. I draw my card for the turn, play an island, and I pass the turn. He only gets to untap one land, and he takes some damage off of the Black Vice. He plays an island, and then he equips the Jitte to the Vaporkin. I respond with Snapcaster Mage into Vapor Snag, which returns the creature to his hand and forces him to take a damage. I untap one island for my turn. Play an island. <laughs> then I play um, Brand New Dude. The uh, Devotion uh, I forget his name, he's a 2-1 Then you get uh, Elementals that are 1-0 Equals the number of Devotion you have And all Elementals you control get plus 1, plus 1 Master of um, Master of Waves That's his name, Master of Waves Alright, so we're going over to game 2 Mix Scooped it was a tough, tough board to come back from. I'm assuming Mick's on the play this. He plays an island. Glad he doesn't have a turn one Phantasmal Bear. He's getting off to an early lead like that is pretty good. He plays a Hammerhead Shark. It is a one and a blue for a two three. Can't attack unless defending player controls islands. I get to play my Felwar Stone. I definitely control a couple of islands, so that Hammerhead Shark is coming my way. And he cliques me, but I have Dismiss. So I draw my card for the turn, and then I scry one. And I play my land for turn and pass. He looks like he's stuck on three lands, and he plays a Grand Architect. He taps the... oh no, not yet. Now he taps the Grand Architect into a Phyrexian Revoker, naming my single artifact in play so I can't tap it from mana anymore. And then he presses in with the Hammerhead Shark. Things are looking grim. Uh, Grand Architect also gives all of his blue creatures plus one plus one, and he can pay a blue to make an artifact creature a blue creature. I draft for turn, play an island, pass the turn. He untaps, flicks his cards in his hand. That's a favorite, a favorite play from Magic players everywhere. He pays two. For Jitte, using the Grand Architect to tap for mana for an artifact. 
He's really comboing out with these three islands, <laughs> making use of every resource he has. He equips the shark. And I say, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Fusion will let you do it. And then I'm like, finally, like, all right, it resolves. And then he presses with both. Things look pretty grim. But I've got some, some ideas of things that I could do. I play Venser bounce the revoker so that I can use my artifact for mana and play vapor snag on the hammerhead shark. And he takes the damage off the vapor snag. He passes the turn to me, I am tap. Drop the turn. I play a Sword of Feast and Famine and equip it, press, because that way I'll be able to untap my land so I can do other things, force him to discard. Especially if he is a Jete, I kind of want to be pressuring him a little bit. I want to, I don't want him to be able to put counters on the Jete, but if he is putting counters on the Jete, I want him to have to use those counters defensively. Now the thing is, if he was able, if I just allowed him to put counters on it, he'd be able to kill my Venser, but now that Venser is a 4-4, because the Sword of Feast and Famine gives a plus 2, plus 2 protect, protection from green and black, and uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player has to discard a card, and you get to untap all your lands. So because it's a 4-4, uh, the Jitte, uh, when it has counters on it, can use counters to give a creature negative 1, negative 1, and every time a creature equipped with the Jitte deals damage, uh, they get two, the Jitte gets two counters. It can also use its counters to gain two life, or give the creature that it's equipping plus two, plus two. He pays two blue mana for the Phyrexian Revoker. And I believe he's naming my artifact again. My, uh, my mana generating artifact. As opposed to the sword. The sword's already equipped. So if he names the sword, it just means I can't equip it to another creature. Um, oh, he hasn't named anything yet. I uh, excluded it. Sorry about that. Drew a card. Exclude his tuna blue instant counter target creature spell. Draw a card. So it's like remove soul or revoke. Uh, no, no. Remove soul or essence scatter. That's the other one. So it costs one more and you get to draw a card. He plays the Hammerhead Shark, taps the Hammerhead Shark to equip the Jitte to the Grand Architect and attack me. There's not much I can do about it, and that Jitte is going to get two counters on it. Um, so, because uh, it's the Grand Architect's ability, um, it says tap a blue creature uh, to add two colorless mana, you can use that mana to cast artifacts or use activated abilities of artifacts. Uh, it doesn't say that it gives the creature um, tap to add two colorless. It says... So I play Mind Over Matter. This is going to help me deal with the Jitte. As long as I can discard cards every turn to tap down the creature that's equipped with the Jitte. I get to deal 4 damage, he discards a card and I untap all my lands. But, I have an impulse as well. I still have 3 mana untapped and I might want to play something, so I impulse main step. I find um, a time vault. And that's infinite turns. Time Vault comes into play taps, and uh, you can skip a turn to untap it, and then you can tap it to gain to, to take an extra turn. With Mind Over Matter, you can discard a card to untap Time Vault. So there you go.